All right, so I haven't done a video in a couple of months. Um, so let me just kind of recap on what I've done. So this is the pincushion that we made last time. And I actually found my glue gun and then my glue gun broke. And now I have an awesome like big one. So this is the pincushion all nice and uh, put together. So, uh, also, if you are following my Facebook page, you will see my little pin cushion frames. They are super adorable, and they are all on Etsy. So go and pick yours up now. Um, there's only seven of them in all these cool colors and fabrics. So today we are going to be making. Oops, you there. A lanyard with that stack, a tall uh, coffee mug cozy thingy to keep your hands all nice and cool out of that stack, and then a mug rug out of this stack. So let's get started. We're gonna start with a mug rug first. And of course I didn't cut my like awesome All right, so if you've never worked with thermal fabric, um, it's basically like fleece, and then it's got the silver aluminum on it. Um, this will like keep the heat in, but make it so that it's not gonna touch your fingers. So it's pretty awesome. I'm just going to just randomly cut, because I don't like, using rulers that much, so I'm just gonna... Mm. We'll hope that's enough. Let me get some more for our other project too. Should be enough. But yeah, I spent way too much at the fabric store today, but I got all the fabric I need for my 1887 uh, bustle dress that I'll be wearing hopefully for Halloween and hopefully for um, my daughter's steampunk uh, event as well. So first, I have this really cute fabric. It's called, it says motherhood. If you're not exhausted, you're doing it wrong or you're doing it right. Um, I thought that was like just super cute. So I cut it into a five by five inch square. And then I've got this blue fabric that I'm going to be putting on the top and on the bottom and then some on the sides. So let's get stitching. I'm gonna do my top first. So I'm just gonna line those fabrics up. Find my foot pedal. I'm gonna do a quarter inch seam on this as well. I should have watched my sewing machine. So I want me to sew today and it broke the top thread. Let's get that re-threaded here. Okay. Well at least it let me get through the first seam there. So that's always good. All right, I'm gonna take our other piece. This is a um, five inches by two inches. So it gives it a nice big border. I'm not back stitching on any of these stitches 
just because once I get everything done on the top and then sandwich it between the thermal thing and our backing, I'm going to quilt all over top of it before I put the binding on. So once I got those top and bottoms on, I'm going to press it out. I'm going to open up these seams as well. That way everything lays all nice and flat. All right, so there's our top, our bottom, and our middle on there. Now these ones, I cut them at nine inches by two inches, which is going to be a little bit longer because I didn't account for the half inch that went missing for the seams, but that is quite okay. Just means that I don't have as much to uh, mess up. Alrighty, and the other side. These mug rugs just go by so quick. If you don't want to take on like a full size quilt project, then just do up a couple mug rugs. Especially if you don't know if you like the color scheme. Of a bigger quilt. Just make a little mug rug of the same block that you'll be doing for that larger quilt. Oops. That way you can make sure everything's going to work out right color wise and you can play around with what kind of quilting you want to do on top of it. And then once you're done with it, you have a awesome little Christmas, birthday, whatever gift for your friends and family. So it serves two purposes. Try not to burn my fingers with this little iron. All right, so there is our awesome little square. So I'm just gonna trim up the sides here so that it's all nice and pretty. I really need to make me a little basket for all my little like thread scraps and fabric scraps because they just kind of get put onto my table and then eventually they go into the trash bag sitting behind me but usually they don't they just sit there all right so now that we've got our square we're going to layer it with our thermal. We're just gonna rough cut that over there. And this is the backing that I chose. I need to iron that out. I need all these calming blues because moms need some calming colors after dealing with their kids all day. <laughs> all right. I think with how I want to do this binding, I'm going to square up all this stuff first. That way I can just do a fold over binding. I don't have to worry about making binding, which just saves a step. Alright, so I'm going to 
try and center as much as I can within the square. I just hope that I have enough. Yeah, I got enough fabric to to roll over. All right, so we're going to find our pin cushion that got hidden, and I'm just gonna pin it in the corners and in the middle. That way, once I'm like quilting it, it's not gonna slide around. We definitely don't want it to be like off center and then when we go to put the binding on and it's gonna be just weird. Alrighty. I'm gonna change my thread. I didn't realize that using black thread or black bobbin. So I was working on something. Oh, I was working on this. I was working on this cute little notebook. I was stitching it on there. White thread. Oh no. Hmm. There we are. Oh, right there. Okay. Whole new Guterman thread. I can't open it. There it goes. Oh, of course. The little perforations there. I just didn't see it. Alright. More view off. Alright. There we go. Get that black bobbin out of there. I have a little bobbin case. It's just still tacked away. Still haven't organized my craft room enough. There we go. Alright, so I think I'm just gonna do like little squigglies on it. Maybe. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Now this I am going to backstitch. <laughs> she just made a funny noise. I don't like it when it does that. Feels fine. 
wonky right there. All right. So there we go. Let's see here. Let's see all the quotes right there. So I need like diagonals around here and a little squigglies around here. I'm just going to give it a quick press just to get everything flat again. All right, so with this, um, like, rolled binding here, so what we're going to do is, I remember it in my head. All right, so we're going to fold the sides in half, and then we're going to pull that up and over. And we're just going to pin and we're going to do that all the way around. Now the corners, get these pinned and I'll show you how to do those. All right. So the corners, go ahead and hold our side here. Like this. We just fold it like this. Maybe. No. Oh, no, there it goes. Okay. So, <laughs> takes me a little bit because I haven't done it in a while. All right. So, on our corners, um, we're going to fold it into a triangle. I don't know if you can see that. Can't figure out. All right. So, I fold it into a triangle here. And then we're going to do the same thing that we did on this first side and fold it in half and then fold it up onto the piece. There we go. That works. All right, I'm gonna make sure I do a pin here on the corner, if it'll let me, there we go, to keep that in there. I'm definitely glad that I made this pin cushion because I put, like, I found all my other pin cushions and put all my pins into it. So now I have, like, a lot. All right. I'm going to do the same thing to all the other sides. And as long as your piece is square, even if your backing isn't, it'll at least look decent. <laughs> Come here. Yeah. 
All right, so on this last piece right here, we need to fold in both the sides. So I'm going to do one side first and then do the other side. Like I'm going to go ahead and like fold up that corner and get a pin in there and then come to the other side. Fold. Fold. So now if you're like super amazing at doing this, all of your corners will come out perfectly. Don't do that. What are you doing? Um, two of my corners came out perfectly. <laughs> and I think it's, it's this last bend right here is where all my corners are coming out perfectly. The other two are slightly off. Up a bit. Let's get that junk up. I definitely do need to go and pick up a new set of quilting pins. But... All right. So careful not to poke myself. So I've got everything pinned around. I'll put it over here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I want to do a very tiny zigzag. And we're just going to go along this line right here. Um, and that will push everything down. I always have to remember like what the settings are on my machine to get like the zigzag that I want because I've done this zigzag so many times. All right. So I'm just going to pick in the middle of one of the sides because I think it'll be easier to do. I'll start taking out pins and get it nice on here. Yeah. All right, so this is going to be very slow going just because like I want to make sure that each of the sides of the zigzag are going on the binding side and the quilt block side. All right, so first corner. Um, so what I'm going to do is go straight all the way till I hit the other side and then I'm going to pull up my feed, uh, my foot, pivot my uh, fabric, and then put it back down again. And you took it. doing um, this type of binding for a quilt that is going to be on show, um, like at a state fair or a quilt show or whatever, I would definitely use um, thread that is either invisible or the same color as your binding. So I know when I did my second quilt that I put into the state fair, um, they just, they hated my binding.
things. Yes, little like few inches. Here. All right, and there, oops, there is the cute little mug rug. Make sure there's a backing there. Now I do have little blue lines on here from when um, I was cutting out the square, um, but it's with a water erasable pen. So all I do is wash this and those will be gone. All right, so next, um, I'm gonna do this lanyard first. Oops. So with this, I have just some couple strips of three inch fabric because not all of them had enough fabric to do just one long line. Um, and then I also have just a little key ring. So the first thing I'm gonna do is sew all these together. This is really great if you go to quilt shows and you need something to um, hold your uh, name tag and all that kind of stuff. Oops, I switched back to the straight. There we go. Um, my daughter will actually be using this for her bus pass. So that's why it's in these fun fabrics here. Put this one to the side. So this, we get to have fun with the iron. Because what we need to do is iron these things flat here. All right, and then we just take our whole piece and we're going to fold it in half with the wrong sides together. And we're going to press that. So if you have like one of those binding tool things, that will work. Um, I don't, obviously. Um, so I just kind of like fold my fabric in half and then just kind of try and run it through like underneath the fabric or underneath the iron like this. but just make sure that you keep picking up your iron. That way it doesn't burn your uh, ironing board, which mine definitely needs a new cover. But I've got a lot of, uh, of really cheap fabric to cover it with that I just bought the other day. Ouch. Fabric is apparently hot after it's been underneath the iron. All right. So now that we've got that center line, we're going to take each half and fold it in to that line. All right, I'm bring it up here. We're gonna take each side, fold it in half to the line. And then we're going to iron that as well. Ouch. All 
in this way, um, all of our seams from this fabric are hidden, so we don't have to do anything to them, which is good, because <laughs> those seams would be very tiny. Now you can also do this, instead of for a lanyard, you can um, put some batting, like the, the quilt batting, in the middle of this. Um, let's see, this is three inch piece, so I would only do um, probably about a one and a half inch piece in the middle of it. And you do the exact same thing, but with the batting in the middle. Um, and then you can use that as a purse handle. I've got several purses that I've actually done that on. Just makes for a little bit heftier handle, a little bit comfier to wear. All right. We're done with the iron, yay! Ow! It's hot. All right, so now that we have our huge long piece, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew it. Now we're gonna sew, I'm trying to make sure you guys can see. We're gonna sew right here along this edge and then also again on the other side. So we'll have two lines. No, everything's all nice and pretty. And you can use um, you can use a zigzag for this, or you can just use a straight stitch. I'm just gonna use a straight stitch for mine. And this is gonna go by super quick. So I'm gonna scoot back a little bit. So now we have one long strip. So we want to make sure it lays out flat. Yeah. Um, and then you're going to fold it in half. I made mine super long because the bus pass has to come all the way like over her shoulder so she can scan off the bus. Right. So we got in half. Right. And then you want to. Turn one of them over 
Okay. Let's see them flat. She's going to turn one over. That way, it actually like lays correctly for like uh, around your neck. And on this, we're going to slip our uh, key ring through. And we're going to pull it up a little bit. We're going to fold about a quarter inch in and then in again. But when we do the in again, we want to make sure our key ring is sitting right there as well. See, I've gotten it. All right, and then we're just going to sew a bazillion stitches right here. That way, that can't pop off. Um, but just make sure that your key ring is still like movable. And just be patient with your machine if it can't do like really thick fabric like mine. And there we go. We have our cute new little lanyard. So I think my daughter will really like the fabric choices that I picked out for her. <laughs> All right, so we're running right through these. All right, so next is our. Uh -oh. I've lost my button. Not my button. Let me go get another button for this one. All right. Okay, so for this one, straighten out my skirt. Oof. There we go. All right, so this one is for a, um, like one of the tall, like, uh, coffee mugs. Mine are upstairs, of course. Um, so, but what you want to do is I've got, um, another one of the motherhood, uh, fabrics. And then I've got some extra fabric that's going to go on the sides of it, and then also this will be the backing. Um, and then also have a button, that way um, once we get to the end, we'll be able to put our button on and secure it with the elastic, that way you can take this on and off. All right, so I guess we'll just use my, my, uh, Oof. We'll just use my drink holder, a little water bottle here, um, as my like example. So what we're gonna do is just kind of like put this fabric on just to kind of see like how much room I still have left back here. Um, so I'll probably put on hmm, about two inches of this green fabric to each side of my center. And this fabric is four and a half by five and three quarters. But I mean, you can use whatever size you're gonna need for your own coffee mug. 
because you can go bigger on this, you can go smaller on it. You can do whatever is going to suit your mug. All right, so these I'm just going to attach them to either side. You can go as fancy as you want. You can do like with the mug rug with all the quilting and all the binding, all that kind of stuff. You can do that to it. However, you want to make this difficult or easy. As I press these seams flat. All right, so I'm gonna take my water bottle, see if it fits. Yep. So I'll probably have at least like really an inch and a half um, once I get all the uh, the backing on it as well. Um, you don't want to cover the entire thing because when you put your button and your elastic on, that'll keep it closed. And if you put these pieces overlapping each other. Um, your button and elastic aren't going to do anything but just make it fall off. So make sure you have at least a little bit of room back there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get these squared up. Alright, so I think I can just use my piece that I already cut off of as my backing. And let's see if this piece is big enough. Nope. Where did the piece go? I don't know. Lost it. Oh, no, there it is. Alright. Hmm. Cut this one up all nice and pretty. Now definitely like if you got these little tiny scraps like this piece right here um don't throw those away because what you can do is make a um like a scrap block um mug rug um like with the frayed edges um which are pretty cute all right so for this one, I'm going to do the um, the envelope style. So with that, we're going to keep this background big, and we're going to put the face of this down onto the backing. We're going to pin that on there, and then we're just going to do um, three sides, and then just like two inches on the other side keeping a little gap and then once we have it all sewn we'll just reach in and grab it out and then once that's done then we'll sew around the edges so you can also do that with um quilts too if it's just like a little baby quilt or um just like a random quilt for the dog or just for yourself that way you don't have to spend all the time of like getting the binding on it and move it for you.
whatever side you got to go in on this side. All right. So now I can just trim up all of this extra background that we don't need. And then go ahead and do a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, or cut the fabric to a quarter inch seam. Um, that way it reduces the bulk on these sides. And then for these corners, I actually did it at, let's see if you can see on this side. Um, so I went and then I did, um, like I basically like cut off the corner. That way, when I do go ahead and flip it, um, it's not going to like bunch up. It's going to have a little more um, leeway of getting like a nice, neat edge or corner point thing. All right, so for this last one, I'm going to leave a half inch of fabric and still cut off the corners. That way, when I do flip it out, I have enough fabric for me to hold. To be able to like push it in to finish out that um that seam. I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these threads off. Okay. And then make sure you go in um where the backing and the front meet and not the front and the batting. Just reach in, grab it, and push. I'm going to use my silhouette tool here. That's from my vinyl machine that you see. Um, I'm going to use the tip of it to push these corners out. Now, I do have a bodkin. A bodkin is basically a um, it's a metal, metal piece with little grabbers on the end. And it's got a little locking device on it. Um, it's really great to put into this and push it out. I just don't know where it's at right now. It's somewhere in my boxes. Still waiting on getting um, some more shelves to put along this wall over here. Um, that way I can actually uh, get all my fabric put up and nice and neat. So I can actually see what I have and I can stop buying more fabric. All right, so I've got all my corners poofed out. I'm just going to give this a quick press. All right, so before we go around and sew this edge, we're going to go ahead and put in our elastic. Um, this is off. Um, so we're going to take our mug, water bottle, whatever it's going to be on. Um, and we're just going to kind of eyeball it. So I'm going to put about a half inch um, inside the actual mug rug. And then I'm just going to kind of stretch it a little bit and put my finger where the button's going to be. And then stretch it again over here. Because um, we want to make sure that it's going to hold this thing tight. I'm just going to put a pin where it's going to go on the other side. So I'll put this one in. Just kind of, you have to play with it to get it to set right. All right, so I'm going to go half inch in and get a pin in there. And I'm going to do the same thing like I did with the lanyard with holding it flat and then twisting it. That way when it goes onto the button, it's going to have some edge to kind of like go underneath the button. And we're just going to go, probably give yourself like, I don't know, like inch and a half um, from the edges. That way it's not going to, like, if you have it both right in the middle, it's going to, like, 
these ends are just gonna like flop up. And it looks like I stitched over that part. Um, seam ripper time. I didn't put enough extra space um, on this one side. I use my seam ripper to undo that a bit. All right, so this one's gonna go in right here and take out the placement pin and put in one of these pins. All right, so I'm just gonna go through and make sure that I've got all my little spots from having that part open. Um, make sure those are pinned. That way I make sure that the needle is gonna go through all that. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew all this together. Oops. Went off the side there. Now when I go over the elastic, I want to make sure I double stitch, um, just go over it, back stitch, go back over it, um, just because it's going to be pulled um, pretty tightly. You don't want that to pop out. All right, so button time. So mine has just a little shank on the back, um, which means it just has a small little piece. Um, you can use ones that have the two buttons or the four buttons, um, just whatever button you like. This is just one that I had sitting um, in my sewing kit. So I'm just going to take some of the thread out of my machine. And I always have sewing needles on me. Um, my camp name is Quilty and even at camp I will always have a needle and thread on me because you never know when you'll need one. Um, I also keep a little pair of kid scissors on me as well and uh, people always know um, that if you need thread or a needle or scissors, that Quilty always has one. All right, so let's get a couple knots in here. All right, so the reason why I don't put my button on, um, like while I'm layering, is because if I put it on before I did this top stitch, I would have a hard time getting my machine around the button. Um, it just it wouldn't have as nice of a look. All right, so I'm just gonna fold this over and go back a little bit and use wherever my water marker and Maybe, no, there it is. I'm just gonna kind of mark like close to the middle between where the elastic is. I'm just gonna kind of bring that out a little bit. And do a little plus sign of where it's gonna go. And again, that is water soluble. So I just have to pop this into the sink and um, let it dry and it'll go away. All right, so I don't want this stitch to show on this back. 
So I'm going to only do my stitches on these top two layers. So to start my stitch, I'm going to go right next to uh, where I put my little X. And I'm going to go ahead and trim up the tail. Great. And then just start stitching this down. So I'm basically going to use this X that I made to um, make sure that I'm doing like how I would in a four uh, circle button. So I'm just going to go So I'm just basically going to go across, over, across, over um, in that sort of pattern, just to make sure um, I get it down pretty solid. And make sure you keep going through that hole as well. And go through like twist the button around and um, make sure you're going through it like a different side of it each time but I'll also make sure it's down there pretty tight because you definitely don't want this to pop off like while you're drinking your coffee or your tea um and have it to where like you just dropped your entire cup because you lost your grip that would just be bad <laughs> threads got all twisted in there All right, so when you think you have it like pretty solid in there, um, we're gonna do uh, a different kind of knot. Um, so we're gonna have it, let's see if you can put it right here. All right, so. We're gonna have a little loop here. I'm gonna take it around. I'm gonna do a couple rounds on the needle. Push it through. You're just kind of like, don't like just jerk it. Just kind of like, just work with it. Right. And go around again. And it doesn't really matter how many times you go around on the needle. All right, go ahead and trim it off. Now I usually keep the thread on my needles like after I use them because most of the time like I'll need that same color again. Down. There we go. All right. Um, so now we're just going to try it out on here. Yeah. Okay. I'll try it out this way. <laughs> All right. So I have it on there. I'm just gonna flip my elastic on the back there. So it's still popping up on the edges. I think it's just because of how wide this thing is. Um, if that bothers you, you could always do two buttons. Um, that way it like pulls this down. But I mean, just for one button, it's pretty on there. <laughs> so I like it. It's cute. This thing, this water bottle sweats a lot. So.
for lucky girls. Let me see. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, well, that is all of the projects that I have for you today. Um, if there's anything that you would like to see more of, or if you have any uh, suggestions on other videos that you'd like to see, just leave a comment below. Thanks.